Today we are talking about 105C letters. The IRS in June issued an informational release discussing disallowing claims without having further information. So I'm Rebecca Shepard. I'm a tax attorney here at Frost Law and I'm here with my partner Peter Huckabo and today we are talking about 105C letters. The IRS in June issued an informational release discussing disallowing claims without having further information. So they were not auditing claims, they were going to disallow claims that they felt were likely ineligible. And that first tranche of disallowance letters was going to be 28,000, but it's going to go up to either 280,000 to maybe half a million claims that are going to be just disallowed by the IRS. Those notices started coming out in July, giving folks 30 days to appeal to disagree with the IRS's disallowances. There was a new notice that came out that discussed what to do with these disallowance letters. What did they say? Right. So first of all, a 105C is a very important uh, milestone in the case of any claim for a refund. So statutorily, the government is required to formally disallow a claim. That's what this 105C letter is generally says we can't allow your claim and identifies a reason why. Um, that is an important milestone, the mailing of that document, because it gives the taxpayer uh, up to two years to file a lawsuit in um, a United States District Court that has jurisdiction or the Court of Federal Claims. In the meantime, during those two years, like Rebecca said, you can, you can protest this. And typically, you have 30 days in order to uh, file a formal protest um, with the uh, IRS. What the government said last week is that they're not going to hold uh, anybody to that 30 days that they will consider an appeal at any time during that two-year process. Now the two-year process is statutory so the IRS can't unilaterally extend that um, so taxpayers do need to be very uh, cautious about the timing with this stuff and even if something is generally agreed to, you know, 23 months in and a refund hasn't been issued, they need to secure uh, an extension. It's a form 907 and it has to be signed by the government uh, in order to be effective. So watch your statutory deadlines. Uh, the other big thing that came out in that release last week is that the IRS really wants taxpayers to send in additional information regarding the eligibility really briefing the theory of the case, identifying all of the governmental orders for any of the periods, or at least it can be read to um, you know, understand that the government's gonna be asking for the taxpayers to uh, substantiate the entire claim and not just what may be um, you know, the immediate issue in the 105C letters. Absolutely. So. It's interesting because the IRS started issuing these notices in July and we presume after reviewing some of the claims, these are some of the items that they wished had been in those first claims um, and are hoping that folks pay attention to for this next round of claims. So it's going to be interesting to see whether or not people change their behavior and how they submit these protests um, to the IRS and whether they would prefer to have this kind of informal exam before going to the Independent Office of Appeals. But if you send in this letter without any of this documentation, we believe, or the IRS has stated, that your case would then go to appeals. You'd get an 86C letter. So if you don't get an 86C letter and you filed a protest and it's been a good amount of time, it would be a good idea to check with the IRS to see what the status of your claim is, to see where you're at, where you are procedurally. Um, and again, like Peter said, just beware of that two-year window. As you start to creep into it, you might want to look at that 907. That's, uh, that's it for today. If you have any other questions about this, about what to do with the disallowance or whether or not your claim is valid, whether or not your refund can be expedited, please let us know. Feel free to give us a call and we'll talk to you soon. Thanks.